This is the water umbrella. It uses water to protect you from the rain. So I'm not getting wet right now. Okay, so it's just starting to rain. Let's just turn on our water umbrella and you can see that underneath I'm completely dry. So let's see if this can actually deflect the rain with water spraying out the sides. Who cares about the people around me? I'm dry underneath with my water umbrella. Now before we test out our water umbrella, let's talk about why on earth I would ever have the urge to make a water umbrella in the first place. It all started with an insane Kickstarter called the Air Umbrella. This was a failed Kickstarter that became a famous meme on the internet due to a very dedicated backer named Michael. He religiously commented asking for a refund for years to no avail. A few years ago I made a video showing how the air umbrella is pretty impossible. You can blow away small drops but it takes basically a leaf blower to power it. But the insanity didn't stop there with that video. I got more comments from people who were not satisfied with the air umbrella. They wanted to see if it was possible to use a fire umbrella instead. So I made a propane powered fire umbrella that blew fire out in 360 degrees. This also didn't work. It made hot water fall through but didn't come anywhere near vaporizing the water before it went through. In both of these devices the water always wins. Well recently I got an amazing idea from a comment in the fire umbrella video. What if you made an umbrella out of laminar flow water spraying out in 360 degrees? Would that work? The first thing that came to mind that usually makes water spray out in all directions is if you've ever turned on your sink faucet and there's a spoon in the sink. It sprays everywhere. And spoons actually work really well for this. But the problem is the spoon's connected from the side and that causes water to drip down onto you below. So instead I fastened a small plate to some aluminum that feeds through the center of a pipe. So the water can spray out in all directions with no handle on the side. And this actually worked perfectly. Okay, so to be testing this, I have some black water here. You can see that when it drips on the ground, we can tell where it drips. So we can delineate what water is the rain and what water is our umbrella. So first, let's start on the lowest setting and see if any water gets through when I drop it from above. The preliminary tests actually look pretty good when I drop the black water above it. You can see that it gets deflected and our test subject remains dry inside. You can see the black drops get deflected and pushed off to the side. But these drops aren't moving very fast. I'm dropping them right above the umbrella. So let's drop them a bit higher now. So with dropping them higher, they easily go right through the stream. Okay, so this isn't high enough flow. Let's turn it up a little bit more and see if we can deflect the drops. So I'm gonna drop them a little bit higher to see if they can get some decent speed on them before they drop through. At this height, the drops are going about half of their terminal velocity. So they're not even full speed, but they can break right through the stream still. Now let's try it with full power. Okay, let's see if this actually works. Okay, pour it on. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that did not work. So I have around a 20 foot radius of spraying water around me, but still it can't stop the slightest drops from coming through when they're dropped from above. The problem is that we have a battle of momentum going on. We have the momentum of the falling raindrop moving straight down, and then we have the momentum of the umbrella moving at a right angle to the falling raindrop. If we had exactly the same speed for both and the same mass for both, then it would move it around a 45 degree angle once they hit together. Since the terminal velocity of a falling water drop is around 10 meters per second, that means that we need our umbrella water to move at much higher speeds. If we put a new tip on it with a smaller hole, it increases the velocity much more. And it looks like we can get it high enough that we don't get any water drops coming through it now. But the only problem now is that the sideways velocity is so high that we're spraying water out in a 30 foot radius around us. So this is less than ideal for an umbrella. But hey, in this case, we're gonna have to worry about number one. Who cares about all the people around you? Let's stay dry under our water umbrella. We know that high speed water in the lateral direction can deflect fast falling water. So now the question is how much water can we deflect with this fast moving horizontal water? Well, let's see what we can do with some higher pressures and higher flow rates. So we're gonna need a bigger hose. And what's the biggest hose? A fire hose. 
So we can see with a fire hose, you can easily stop a water bottle from being poured below. You don't even get a 45 degree angle. It basically just turns the vertical velocity into horizontal velocity. The momentum of the horizontal water is so much greater than the vertical momentum that when you add the vectors together, you basically just get the initial horizontal momentum. So now for the final test, let's see if I hold the fire hose over my head, if I can deflect an entire bucket of water being dropped on me. Whoa! It's not getting me! It was at this point I realized as I was holding a fire hose over my head as my wife dumped a bucket of water on me that maybe, just maybe, the water umbrella might not be a good idea. And I'm really nervous to ask for any other umbrella suggestions. So maybe I'll start a Kickstarter for the water umbrella just in case. Maybe Michael will donate. <laughs> And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and we'll see you next time.